Greetings, University Honors graduates, parents, family members, friends, and members of the university community. Welcome to the 2020 University Honors Courting Ceremony. This year, we celebrate the achievements of over 120 University Honors graduates, by far the largest graduating class in the history of UC Riverside. We are extremely proud of these students, not only because of their achievements, but because they had to do so under very difficult circumstances during this pandemic. We hope that someday you will come back and see us, and we hope that will be soon. But for now, we will hold this virtual ceremony to celebrate with you. Now, this has been an interesting time on campus, and upon reflection, I thought of Rachel Carson's most famous book, Silent Spring. And in that book, in the very first chapter, A Fable for Tomorrow, Carson describes a suburban neighborhood, beautiful suburban neighborhood, but with one exception. She describes a strange stillness. That strange stillness occurred because there were no birds, other signs of life were gone, because of human beings' willingness to spray pesticides. This spring on our campus was also silent. Not from the animals. In fact, animals came back. We had birds and animals all over campus. But for a university campus, that silence was deafening because what makes us a community, the staff, the faculty, and most importantly, the students, we're not here. And yet somehow, all of these people came together in short order, got through the winter quarter, and then retooled for the spring. Courses went on as planned. Students fulfilled their assignments. And for university honor students, what it meant was they completed their capstones. This was mostly because they were prepared to do so, because they were committed, and because they had support of their faculty mentors. This is an amazing achievement. You would have been well within your rights to pull out of the university honors because the stresses were so great, and yet you did not. We could not be any prouder of you, and so we want to have this celebration tonight so that we can celebrate not just with you, but with your family members and your friends. We want your faculty mentors to participate as well. And so this night, of course, is for you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the ninth chancellor of the University of California, Riverside, Kim A. Wilcox. Congratulations, honors graduates. What an achievement, an achievement in a usual year uh, not many students can call themselves honors graduates of the University of California, Riverside. But a special achievement in a year like this, when just the notion of completing your senior project had a whole different sense than it usually does. Congratulations. Universities are interesting places. Um, we think of students and faculty, but there's lots of different kinds of students and faculty. Uh, we have professors. We have associate professors, we have assistant professors, we have adjunct professors, we have part-time professors, we have teaching assistants, and we also have a group of people we call distinguished professors. Now, you may not have ever met a distinguished professor, but just the, by name alone, you have a sense of who those people are and what their accomplishments are and what their role is. And I'm guessing your impressions are correct. They're faculty members who achieved the highest kinds of success in their fields, and we look to them for special contributions and leadership. And just as there's lots of different kinds of professors, there's lots of different kinds of students. There are part-time students and full-time students and first-year students and second-year students, graduate students, undergraduate students, and there are honors students. And even if you knew very little about a university, by just understanding that there were a group of students we called honors students, you would have a sense of those individuals, of who they are, of their skills, their talents, their aptitudes, and their role. And just as those distinguished professors serve a special role, I believe all of you have served a special role. You've helped us to set the bar for achievement. You've helped us to think about the future in your own areas of study, but also as an institution and what we collectively can achieve and succeed at in the future. So in addition to congratulations, and congratulations on all that you've done, I want to say thank you.
for playing your special role in our institution, a role that makes it a better place. Congratulations, Honors Graduates 2020. Hello to all the honor students, faculty, staff, and anybody who might be watching this. I'm Cynthia Shaw, and I'm the current editor-in-chief for Audiomus, the multidisciplinary research journal run through the honors program. I first want to say congratulations to all of the honor students for completing their capstones. Completing a large scale project is already a challenging task in itself, but on top of these uncertain times, it's a remarkable feat. Everybody should feel extremely proud of all of the work they have accomplished thus far. This year's theme for Adiamis was reflection. At the time, the Adiamis staff had no clue how relevant this theme would be to our current situation, but we found comfort in the fact that this theme was a universal experience. We had hoped to create a journal that inspired self-reflection and worldly reflection, and I believe the pieces we have selected reflect that. Pieces from all across the nation came to us, and with over 140 pieces to choose from, we ended up choosing just 17. These pieces all tackle a different part of reflection with various overarching themes, 
like reflecting on life, reflecting on death, reflecting on loss. And with these themes, we hope that one of them speaks to you in some sort of way. I now want to take this time to thank Dr. Richard Rodriguez and Dr. Richard Cardulo for being amazing advisors to the journal. I also want to thank the entire honors faculty and staff that have supported us on this journey through this project. And of course, I want to thank all of the editors and leads for their amazing contributions to the journal. This journal couldn't have come to life without your help. We now ask that you consider submitting to this 2020-2021's edition of Audiomus. You all have worked incredibly hard on your capstone and should have a chance to showcase it further. If you have any submissions such as art, poetry, photography, fiction, nonfiction, or your research, aka your capstones, you should all submit to the website listed here. Again, congratulations to all the honor students for completing their capstones, and I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy during these times. Thank you so much. to be able to speak with you all, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. We're in the middle of a historic but unfortunate event. Of course, there's always something happening somewhere in the world, but this is the first time in my conscious knowledge that the whole world had a moment of suffering together. When quarantine was announced and the campus was shut down, I remember thinking how much this felt like a movie, how much it was difficult to wrap my head around the situation. Uh, I actually have a friend in Shenzhen, China, who was in lockdown uh, since late January. And until March, I kept thinking how bad I felt for her and for everyone there. She was so afraid to just leave her apartment. Um, and it felt so far away. But come March, I would have to adapt too. At first, like I'm sure to many of you, it felt confusing and disappointing. I was supposed to be on my way to DC, ready to intern at the house. I was supposed to go see the cherry blossoms and the monuments that I've only ever read about. Uh, I was supposed to go visit my best friend in New York and give her her incredibly late Christmas present. I wasn't supposed to be lying in bed for the fourth day in a row, staring at the ceiling because I felt helpless because I was just a college student who couldn't change anything. And it went on like this, for the first few days of the quarantine. But then I remembered and I realized that people's ability to adapt to unexpected situations has always impressed me. I remembered that I was lucky to be safe and healthy and have parents who take care of my every need and sisters who spoil me. 
I remembered I have faced adversity before, whether it was culture shock when studying abroad or systematic discrimination throughout life or depression and anxiety. I remembered that it's human nature to push through, that it's my nature to push through. So take solace in the fact that it's in your nature too to adjust to the current situation and do amazing anyway. Of course, the medical aspect of the disease is incredibly important, but personally, I've been more interested in societies and governments. And I noticed that some governments have done a great job, like South Korea and New Zealand, by taking the right measures with contact tracing and establishing quarantines. And some have failed their citizens greatly, like our own, who were too busy trying to prove medical professionals wrong and protect their ever precious capitalistic agenda over their people. But this pandemic is not something that only one group of people or one country is going through. This is something we are truly all facing together. So we need to come together to fight for, for those who are facing it worse than others and understand that we need to protect them and fight against racism and for black lives and push for more PPE for medical professionals and demand leniency for the people who are unable to self-sustain. These problems are all interconnected. The cracks in our current system are more obvious now than ever before. And as the next generation, we will be the ones inheriting these systems. So there's no reason to shy away from these problems. We can't just ignore them. They're not going to go away. We need to create a country that is protective of all of its people, regardless of their religion, race, gender, immigration status, economic class. We need to push for a system that is protective of everyone's health and ensures that each person is treated with equity. We need to come together to understand our polluting tendencies and preserve our world and our environment and know the dangers of climate change. I, I actually um, am from Riverside, but I never intended on coming to UCR. Uh, eventually my parents convinced me and honors was a really big part of that. And honors became a very big part of why I felt comfortable at UCR. It was Jane Kim, my amazing counselor, who first introduced me to the term public policy. And it was because of honors that I took a class, um, an ignition seminar on modern hunger and famine with Dr. Dana Simmons, uh, who became one of the first people to support my academic career and help me navigate through college. So it was because of honors that I became passionate about these social problems. And I was given the resources and the faculty who supported me and encouraged me to pursue these interests outside of class. Uh, so I hope that we all can come together and understand and use our lessons and uh, experiences from UCR and from honors to push for the changes that we so desperately need to see in this world and in this country. These are scary times and it would be foolish for me to pretend that it's not scary to graduate in a time when the future seems so unknown and every day brings a new headline of more death and more cases. Um, problems are popping up faster than solutions these days, but the future has always been unknown. No matter what we plan for, no matter what we hope for, we have done this before, so we can do it again. Um, as someone who speaks more than one language, I have realized that sometimes speaking more than one language results in not being able to express myself in any language, um, but sometimes it's really great for conveying an emotion that doesn't really exist in another language. For example, uh, Korea in general has a culture that really values and rewards hard work. And so often as a goodbye, when departing, we say, Sugo hesso, or you worked hard. And so to the class of 2020, I'd like to say, Sugo hesso, urido. We worked hard too. Some of us might be very excited to leave college, just tired of 8 a.m. lectures and spending hours on end in Rivera. Some of us might have exciting opportunities like jobs and graduate school lined up already and we're impatient to get to them. Uh, some of us might be disappointed to graduate in these times when our achievements are being overshadowed by never ending police brutality and a global pandemic and we can't celebrate properly. Um, some of us might have some regrets from the past few years because we weren't able to accomplish all of our goals. And some others of us might dread leaving the safety and comfort of being a college student. But no matter what your sentiment on graduation and no matter what has happened in these past few years, just remember that you too worked hard and that much is enough. 
And lastly, I'd like to say thank you to Honors and its amazing support system, to Jane for believing in me from day one, to Dr. Richard Cardulo for <laughs> always supporting my crazy ideas and never doubting my abilities, uh, to Dr. Ricky Rodriguez for being my capstone mentor and making me feel like I can accomplish anything, and to Jane, uh, sorry, I said Jane already, um, to Beth Kassenthrush for being one of my most important teachers in life and giving me the best advice. And of course, to my friends and family for supporting my dreams and taking such good care of me. I am forever humbled and honored to be a part of the class of 2020. Here's to us, whether we are starting something new or taking a little break or just pushing on day by day. Please stay safe and healthy and take care of one another. Thank you.
praise the things that I did, yet with every broken bone, I swear I lived. That concludes our program. I would like to congratulate the four Pillars of Excellence Award winners, the three Faculty Mentor of the Year Award winners, the two Distinguished Teaching Award winners, our Professor of the Year Award winner, Dr. Amanda Lucia, and of course our Honors Valedictorian, Ms. Zara Kazi, for her inspirational words this evening. I'd also like to thank the Audiama staff, for putting together another outstanding edition of this nationally recognized publication. Look forward to next year. And I would also like to thank the UCR Chamber Singers and especially Dr. Ruth Sharloff for providing us the entertainment and the music to accompany this program. We all know that you had a lot of help in getting here, whether it was from faculty members, from friends, from staff, please take the time to thank them. And of course, I would like to especially thank both the University Honors Faculty Fellows, all seven of them, and the amazing University Honors staff who have been here for you all along to support you and to make sure that you succeed in this culminating project, your capstone project. We look forward to seeing you in the future. We know you're going to do great things. Please keep in touch. And in the meantime, Fiat Lux.